What is going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Fall, and welcome to Tank Count right here on Wrestling News Co. On today's edition, I'm talking to a man who's involved with so many companies. Uh, we got awesome. WWC TV champion. We got part of NWA as well. Also, if I'm correct, stop the shoplifter. It's Brian Idol. How you doing today? What's up, man? Uh, let me add one to your list. I don't know if you saw WWE dropping a new reality show today. Uh, the announcement going on Roku. I'm also in the trailer of that. <laughs> so got that happening today what uh, is happening here today well let's yeah, start yeah. from there then shall we because you know i did think i saw you but i had to confirm here we are now so what was the process behind that and when was this recorded i'm guessing last wrestlemania uh i believe it was around wrestlemania time but the uh the tryout leading up is to SummerSlam. Uh, that was in Los Angeles or Vegas. One of it's Vegas, right? Okay. Uh, so yeah, so it was it was leading into that. So yeah, really cool thing to be a part of, man. Uh, kind of just popped up in my lap there, and uh, like I said, I, I probably can't say too much about it, but uh, I mean, clearly I'm on it. I mean, at least I'm on the trailer, so we'll we'll see from there. But yeah, it looks like uh. I've gotten some good feedback on that. So it looks like uh, it's going to be something that's pretty cool coming out. Kind of a surprise, really. Something I almost uh, wasn't sure if it was happening or not. So right. you know, just because, given yeah. the million other things I have going on to just like wake up to that. And I was like, oh, look at this. Cause, so. Yeah, because they tape you nonstop, if I'm correct. Like, we don't have to get into the details of who wins, who loses, things like that, because obviously uh, you can't say that. Well, for me, I wasn't taped nonstop. So I'm saying what I did for them was uh, over a short period of time. So. Like I said, I I don't want to give away the show. It's not my place to. So just, I'm there. I'm in the trailer. Watch it. It's on Roku coming out April 1st. I believe it's a streamer, so I think they're dropping all the episodes. I don't know. So I, I hope they don't. I hope it goes weekly. That would be cool. But uh, it's on Roku April 1st. That's what the ad says. And uh, you can see me for about two seconds. But I do have one of the only action shots in the trailer, which is what I would prefer. I'd rather have me in action than standing there. So... Very cool, very, very neat to be a part of it and kind of unique considering I'm, you know, predominantly in the NWA day to day. And, uh, you know, it's one of those cool things. That's amazing because, yeah, you're right. You'd rather be the person in the action than the woman puking in the trash barrel that I That's saw in the trailer as well. That's a fact. So, you know, imagine that. You're like, oh, man, I, I hope they use the best version of you're me like, in this trailer. <laughs> 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 That's got to suck. Now, I've looked, I've attended one of those tryouts. Uh, it was SummerSlam Detroit last year. So I'm th guessing if you're talking about SummerSlam before that, that'd be in Nashville, if I'm correct on my No, location. no. It was, then maybe I'm just wrong about it being SummerSlam. I, I don't know. It was uh, – I want to say the whole thing took place in – I keep my brain says Vegas, but maybe Los Angeles. I don't know. Well, that's so summer. So WrestleMania last year was in Los Angeles. So then so it was WrestleMania. 39. It was WrestleMania. Yeah. What do I know? Yeah. I'm ruining it. They're going to kick me. They're going to edit me out of the episode <laughs> at this point. You don't know the locations, <laughs> the time zones? <laughs> How uh, dare you, sir? How surreal. dare you? Well, you know, it comes with travel in the world uh, nonstop for every year of your life for the last i don't know how many years so i just the dates and times are a blur but I you know probably the more professional thing to do would be have it written in front of me down here but i don't because we didn't plan on talking about it that was an impromptu moment and that's what happens the details get fuzzy that's what i love so much i've asked people many questions where they're like it happened this year and then everyone in the comments is like you don't know what you're talking like i remember I, I, I interviewed like earl hebner once earl hebner i love him to dear he's like 70 something and he's i'm asking mm -hmm. him questions about 35 years ago remember this integral detail of this day in the backstage yeah. did someone drink from this cup and they weren't supposed to you know it's like, I, you don't know what know. you're talking about yeah, yeah like, like, you don't know this guy's an idiot get him out of here <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah it's like dude it's Earl Hebner man he uh he, he yeah, he main evented there. like almost every Wrestlemania main event that mattered for the first uh you know 20 years so let's let's cut him some slack I don't remember what I did yesterday so oh, real it's, it happens it's there. It adds up. Moral of the story, it adds up. Travel yes, around, of course. You know? Of course. Now, I, you know, like you said earlier about the uh, the brand new WWE program, it reminds me of Breaking Ground where they took the NXT wrestlers. It, it may be a little tough enough as well where they took these these elements of reality TV and competitions and kind of slim them together to see what happens because everyone loves drama. You know? I think that's exactly what you got going here. So, yeah. Man, well, I, I am pumped for that. And obviously, you can't speak of your involvement with that, but obviously, you're excited about it. And you're not the person puking in the, you know, no, no, 
listen, no disrespect. I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way that I didn't come off like a badass in the thing. And that's, I'm proud of that. So there's, there's Perfect. no moment like that, that I believe that they would catch me with. Cause I don't remember having a moment like that. So good on me, I guess. Yeah. I, I've only attended one of those, not as a performer, as a, a, a spectator, uh, SummerSlam last year in Detroit. And, you know, you you hear that they're going to put you through the ringer. And I'm watching stuff. This is not when you think you're, like, dancing like Shawn Michaels in the ring and spitting water like Triple H. This oh, no. was... Yeah, they run you ragged. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they you kill ragged. you because they're checking, obviously, your cardio first off, dedication. And I mean, I've been, I've been in a WWE tryout. I mean, it's, so it's describe it to me then. What is the day like? Because I saw it with my own eyes. So I it starts it. very early in the morning, which is not my cup of tea to begin with. So you're up at like six. I think you're over there by like eight thirty, and by nine, you're for sure, you know, warming up. And and the warm ups alone are a workout. And then you're in the ring. You got to do the drills. A lot of the drills are a big mix of cardio and, um, you know, power at the same time. So you're doing all these drills on the ropes, these unique things. And, I mean, you just – there's an insane amount. There's all these different rings, so you got to go through the different rings. You know, wrestling rings, there's multiple ones. So you do the drill in the one ring, get out, do the drill in the other ring. Maybe it gets a little harder in that ring, go to the next one. There's uh, four, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you go through there and – you know, all I can say is it's really hard. I remember, I'll, I'll take you back to my experience and like, imagine they do one of the hardest drills that they do, probably the second hardest drill. And I mean, I'll explain it quick. So it's like, you got to hold on to the rope and you got to like kick your legs like up in the air like this, like high, like get your knees up to your get chest. Your knees and then second rope, they, right? Second and rope. Then they, and then they yell and you got to take a bump on the ground and pop back up and do it again. And you just keep going, right? And you got to do it all through all the rings and all and like one rings faster and faster and faster. And by the time you get to the end, you're just, you're ready to die. And so you don't get a break until you get till the end. So when you get to the end, that's when you're standing online and the other people finish and that's your break. And then we're on to the next drill. Right. And I believe this one was the end of the day though. Right. Cause they know it kills you. So uh, on mine, <laughs> there was an odd number of people. So here I am at the end of the line. I get a nice rest. Like, I'm like, oh, day's over. Like, I didn't know the day was over yet, but I'm like, oh, thank God I did that. You know, like, I made it. I did it, right? I didn't quit. I got all the way through, and they pushed me hard. And I just remember I'm standing there, and the last guy in line is in front of me. So I'm the beginning of the new line, which is the end of the drill. And, of course, the guy go. <laughs> No, or maybe it was two guys in front of me. So the guy goes up, and there's an odd number of people. And then Elbert says, uh, get in the ring to the other guy in front of me. And the guy in front of me goes, I already did it. And he goes, what's that mean? He goes, I already did the drill. And he's like, okay, great. Go stand over there. Like, you're done. You know what I mean? Like, that's the kind of quitter you wow. are. So he's like, who's next? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and like, here we go. And in my mind, I'm like, all right, they're just going to make me do the one ring. So I get in there and I'm going all out, right? Next ring. I'm like, please let me stop. Next ring. Please let me stop. Next ring. Please let me stop. I'm like, I mean, I've never been so beat up in my life at that moment. Like, I, my legs were ready to fall off my body. I was, like, ready to throw up, like, from the bottom of my stomach. Like, I was so done and, like, so out of breath. And, like, I, I'm out here feeling like I need a lung transplant. You know what I mean? And <laughs> And, like... I just remember I get off the line and I'm like, oh my God, we have to do more drills today. And finally they're like, and I gave it away at the beginning of the story, but they're like, okay, that's it for today. And I was like, oh my God. Like I was like, uh, and I was like, how did I just do that? And I remember like the actual feeling of like, oh, thank God that's over, man. Like that was insane. But I'm the only one. I had to do it twice. No one else. No one else in the entire, in a tryout that consisted of Killer Cross, Austin Theory, and a bunch of other people that are you know been in wwe i had to do that drill twice nobody else <laughs> you survived to tell the tale yeah it was that was brutal but it's a hard it's a hard it's a hard gig you know that tryout is not it's not bs it's, it's it's hard and i think that's what people are going to learn from this new wwe show because again they think like well right. i have a look i i i look yeah, at me i, I have abs I, I, right I, it's like, yeah, okay, that's great. They like that, but they also want to prove to you that you're not just abs. You have to be more than this. So they test you mentally, physically, emotionally. It's all there in a short burst. They got to get a look, you know. They got to. I mean, you got to think about it like a business. 
right? Same as the NFL. When you go through the rookie combine, it's not just how fast you can run and how high you can jump. There's other things. There's measurables. They make you take tests. They talk to you. There's reasons. I mean, you're, you're an investment. It's a business. It's a job. You're, you're, you're interviewing for a job. So you have to, you have to meet a standard. And I think, you know, it's real easy. You know, hopefully people, some of the, I would say more intelligent people or more logical, reasonable people will watch it and say, I understand, you know, like this is hard. But, you know, there'll always be the computer keyboard warriors are like, I can do it. And the reality is they'd be the ones puking in the garbage can. <laughs> so no shame to that girl that threw up in the garbage can. No shame. No her. shame. And there was like definitely I- some at my tryout that were thrown up at the garbage can. And I mean, it's life. It's not easy. You're not ready for that sometimes. And sometimes it's just a difference of did you drink water five minutes ago or didn't you? And that could do you in. So it's it's a it's a whole it's a tough thing. No shame in the game. Anyway. Man. Exciting, yeah. exciting to see. It's going to be cool. Got to plug it. I'm in the trailer. Got to yeah, plug it. Yeah, of course. Man. You got to plug Thank it. Thank you, You're WWE, for putting me up. in the thing. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a blessing, and I, I really do appreciate it. It's cool. Of course. Of course, man. I'm excited now. I'm more excited than I was before. I was like, oh, man, I like this show because, again, you – you want to people want to see more behind like it's great to see what's happening because like, why did that person say that and TV? i know this i i can give this away i think it's kind of in the the writing of the trailer or whatever but these are not just regular people off the street so they're not typical indie wrestlers so it's definitely everyone's got a backstory here and they, they kind of touch on it in the trailer you see the people telling their stories so again definitely an interesting watch and again not just somebody like oh i have this story but there's there's more to it those are athletes so there's there's something there so it's and really cool that's a good question to ask you as well because over the years it's changed completely at least in the wwe's eyes it was like you had to be like find a, a pathway to get the wwe you knew to know someone and then it became oh we're gonna go to colleges and recruit athletes who have no experience in wrestling whatsoever and go, you obviously are dedicated to your craft. Maybe you can be dedicated to our craft. And for a long time, it was, oh, football players, oh, they shouldn't be wrestlers or something like that. Has that changed in your eyes? Or are wrestlers still holding a little bit of that? Well, I've worked my ass off from, from nothing, and you just you did well too, but what about me? Well, here's the real truth. If you look historically... Most of the, I, mean, I say most, a, a, a big enough percentage, I want to be accurate for the people at home, a big enough percentage of wrestlers that have made it huge in wrestling are former athletes. Right. And it goes all the way back to like the 40s on that. So, you know, even in the modern era, like, what are you going to say? Tell that to AJ Francis. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, he's legitimately that big and that strong. I say it all the time out of all the wrestlers I ever wrestled the most physically strong human I've ever been in the ring with is AJ Francis. And it's evidenced if you watch him wrestle, he picks up two, three guys at a time and does moves with him. He catches them from outlandish lengths. He, he, you know, throws you farther than anybody. It's just, he's a freakishly strong dude, love him or hate him. So it's, there's no shame in picking people like that. And there's also no shame of grinding it out and coming up through indie wrestling. And there's advantages and disadvantages to both because chances are, the, the typical guy that has to grind it out through indie wrestling means he doesn't have the, the measurables on site. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's more of a, you know, a, a different wrestler. That's a shorter guy. That's a, uh, maybe a skinnier guy or maybe a really fat guy or like guys that understand the craft and, and proved it through proof of concept as opposed to like, this is a no-brainer. This guy's six feet six. He's 280 pounds. He's super jacked. He looks like a statue. You know what I mean? Gorgeous man. Obviously, he's going to be something. So give him a chance. So yeah. there, there's no shame in either game. You can't fault people for, for dedicating themselves and being dedicated athletes and having college careers and NFL careers. And you can't fault people for, for being nobodies and working their way up from the bottom. I mean, both, it really, when you're being fair, it's hats off to both involved. And, and you know, you just – you really just you root for you should be rooting for all of them and and I think the only people that don't are the ones that are jealous that they can't be there you know I mean I face it all the time man so many so many people hate me and I I think it's funny like I'm like look I don't if I was sitting here like rubbing it in anyone's face then I would understand but like I don't say nothing to nobody I just put my head down and keep going the only time I talk smack on somebody is when they if you push me first I'll push you twice as hard I don't care so. You know, I just think it's those type. It's always the same type of people. 
it's the why me, it should be me, blah, blah, blah. But where's the work? Put the work in. You know what yep. I'm saying? Of that's, course. That's all I can say. And not I that love I'm your in answer. some and not that I'm in some super huge high up spot, but like, you know, I don't go out to bars, I don't drink. I, I go to the gym when I could be hanging out with friends. You know, I skip the the ice cream shop on a on a Sunday evening when I'm driving in my car and all I want to do is go have ice cream and enjoy life. I don't. I'm like, uh, I got to, you know, I'm a wrestler, so I have to look a certain way and I have to take care of my body and I, I have to make sure I get enough sleep and I have to make sure I'm ready for the next, you know, event. And it, I have a responsibility and obligation, I feel there. So, you know, like I said, people think it's all just glory. It's not. And usually the people that are complaining are the ones that don't make the sacrifice. So it's, it is what it is. But, yeah. Uh, no, I, I again, 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 great answer. You were like you're rooting for both sides. That's kind of what I, you know, you got there because some people yeah. don't, you know, for a long time, I feel like for a long time, but you might have a hell of a good point. Go back to the forties, the wrestlers who came up from everywhere. The, the world champions of all were athletes doing something before they were wrestlers. I mean, or, even the lesser knowns, like I'm saying, but like, look at guys like Ernie oh, Ladd. No, and, say, even and, all of them. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, dude. Those yeah, are, dude. Those are, former pro athletes or current pro Ernie Ladd was doing it in the off season. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just, it is what it is, man. It's uh you can't hate. And uh, I mean, I'm not the type of person anyway. Like I never was that person was like, Oh, you can slam dunk a basketball. Oh, cause he's so tall. You know what I mean? I'm the more like, Whoa, this guy slam dunks a basketball. I want to slam dunk a basketball. Unfortunately, I never could. You know what I mean? I didn't mean That's I didn't point, try. Man. I didn't yeah. try. It's not that I didn't try and I didn't hate anybody for, for not whatever. And if you ask me why I can't slam dunk a basketball, my honest answer, I didn't try hard enough long enough. If I bet you if I kept at it, I'd figure it out. But wow. I didn't. So wow. that's how it goes. You know? Yeah. Well, this weekend you are defending the championship, the WWC TV yeah. championship. Well, let's look at that for a minute. Yeah, and, yeah I'm not uh, just a wacko. Yeah, you know, you know, we're here to talk about other things, not not throwing up in a trash barrel. Uh, you're defending the championship this weekend against the Lightning. And I guess I've been told by other people as well, Listen, you're talking smack about Bad Bunny in, oh, yeah. in, you know, in, in a, an organization in Puerto Rico. Yeah, listen, those are fighting words. I'm like, uh, so are you worried? What's going on here? Because Bad Bunny has well, been known to show up places and attack people who piss him off. I was in Puerto Rico watching him beat the crap out of Damian Priest. Is that going to happen to you this weekend when you defend the championship? Well, let me put it this way. First of all, I was sitting here with this title. This is the WWC Television Championship. And I will say, if you look at the history of WWC, you know, in Puerto Rico, it is the most prestigious title that existed. This one's been held by everybody. Even the great Muda had this title, you know, and you go to the Americans that had it that were great. You got Shane the Glamour Boy. You got Chris Candido. You got Christopher Daniels. I mean, this belt has a, a serious lineage. And uh, we're back to the old school design of this belt, which I'm super proud of. <clears throat> and, uh, you know... For those that don't know, and, and this is good because we're here in the States doing this podcast and, you know, we're speaking, you know, no Spanish. Uh, WWC on the island of, of Puerto Rico is like, might as well be as big as WWE there. Like this, these are, they, they sell out arenas. It's on TV every week. Everywhere I go in the streets, people recognize me there. People scream my name out of cars and I'm super grateful for that. And uh, I'm a, I give them the, my best every time I'm there and I work my way up to this belt. And again, like I said, in my eyes, this is the belt to have in this company. And, you know, to flip a page from what I was just saying, when I look at somebody like Bad Bunny, okay, what bothers me is this guy gets a lot of credit. First of all, I'm a musician, okay? I've been on stage at Madison Square Garden. I've been on stage at the Hollywood Bowl. I've traveled all over the world. You know what I'm saying? I've been there with the Smashing Pumpkins. Um, you know, like I look at Bad Bunny and I'm like, number one, I just don't think he's that good. I'm not into his music. I don't really feel it. Secondly, I just get annoyed and I can't help it. I just get annoyed because he pops up in wrestling, right? And he's sitting there all the time, popping up, showing up. And everybody's like, oh, it's a big deal. Bad Bunny is here. And like, I'm like, all right, dude, but can we just like, can we just face facts? Bad Bunny is like 165 pounds if he's lucky, if he's soaking wet, right? If he eats enough beans and rice that day, he's 168 pounds, right? So here we go. I'm out here trying to make a name for myself, trying to bring prestige to the island of 
you know, you know, Puerto Rico in, in wrestling and try to, you know, breathe life into the WWC. And I just find it funny. I just find it funny that every time something like that happens, somebody comes along, the name Bad Bunny gets dropped. So you know what? I'm going to be the first person in probably forever to not be like, oh, man, it's so cool. Bad Bunny's trying to glom onto my credit and he might show up. Like, I'm like, listen, if Bad Bunny shows up, I'll just beat him up. And I don't care. I got no shame in saying it. I'm sure he'll call 10 security guards on me. I don't care. I, if he wants to wrestle me, I will take him. I'll beat him up. I say it every time I talk about him. There's nothing macho about him. He's a little skinny wimp. And I'm not going to pretend that he's some superstar wrestler because I don't go on stage and pretend I'm some superstar rapper or pop star or whatever he's trying to be. And so I want to beat him up. And that's just a fact. I don't like Bad Bunny. I want to beat him up. I love it. I think that people would want to see that. Well, and if he shows up and he wants to try to do something, try and do it. Because like I said, you're 165 pounds, bro. You're, I don't, I think he's under six feet tall. It's, I don't know what kind of lifts he's wearing in his shoes this day, but it's, I don't think he's a tall man. I don't think he's a large man. I, on the other hand, with shoes on, by the way, I'm six, three. So I'm like six, two and three quarters without shoes on, but I'll say six, three when I got, when I got my wrestling gear on and I'm 227 pounds and I'm a uh, solid lean muscle so i will rip bad bunny's arm off and if i want i'll make rabbit stew out of him that's how i feel about it why <laughs> well this weekend we might have someone uh have their arm ripped off and then put into a pot and you will cook bad bunny in front of a live audience this weekend when you defend your wwc uh, tv championship i i like the way you say it. and i'm going against a legend out there lightning who is a large man, and he will not be an easy win. And we got into it at the last show, and he stuck his nose in my business, and I paid him back. And you know what? He lost that title shot, so now he's trying to come after my title. And you know what? I don't know how the ranking system works there, but I don't think he's qualified to just call me out and challenge me for a title. But you know what? I'm not a coward. I'll sit there, and I'll take on anybody, especially it's my title to defend. And I beat, you know, this guy, Yovan, with for the title. And I beat him two more times on top of that. So I'm done beating that guy 52 times. So now this guy wants to get in my business. And like I said, big dude, scary dude, doesn't matter, dude. I'm Brian Idol. And if I say I'm going to win, I'm going to win. So I'll tell you guys this. You should come watch me beat Lightning. Uh, you know, we're, we're uh, I believe we're in uh, Julio Elto. I, I don't Tickets are still available, and I know walk-ups are a huge thing. Yeah. So, you know, it's not a normal win. The island of Puerto Rico. Let me yeah. tell you something. Anybody who knows or doesn't know, you could show up at that show at 845. The opening bell will be hitting. It's not a problem. Yeah, tickets are still available if no one knows that. It, it's like, a, you know, in America, at least where, you know, I'm recording, and I think you are recording as well. It's like if it didn't have 15,000 sell-up, people start freaking out already. But when you yeah. show up – for events and certain no these are, packed. these are always they're packed. these are always they're always packed and, but i'm saying like walk-ups are a huge yeah, thing in no a huge part of it yeah there's there's line it's that's like a part of the, the 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 atmosphere of let's let's get together let's walk up let's buy these tickets let's go in hey man you attack bad bunny and lightning and retain your championship and, and you know and dance look around. the best there and look the best they're doing it that's how i roll but yeah that's what i love about i don't think i said that i don't think i said that part but we'll put that in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> but that's the best part about that island, man. Everything's got a little bit of an old school feel, and I'm an old school kind of guy, so I love it there, man. I love the grassroots, you know, nature of the people, and I love that the, the wrestling on the island of Puerto Rico is second to none. I love it there. It's my home away from home, and I spend a lot of time there, and I'm just, like I said, man, that's why I don't shy away from nobody, and... It's just that's the deal, man. I'm here to I'm here to fight until I can't fight anymore. And so, like, that's cool, man. Like, you want to you got beef with me? I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to embarrass you. I'm going to make you look bad, and that's it. Man, I'm I'm pumped. I'm I'm the idea of just ripping off Bad Bunny's arm and then you retaining your championship against Lightning, and then Boom. so much is happening. The fact that you're not throwing up in a trailer for the WWE show, you're in action, you're looking <laughs> good there. And obviously, you know everything is going to go a okay oh, yeah, for man. you oh, this yeah. weekend. And you know, though, I did stumble upon something. Uh, on I believe it was on Instagram. Did Lars? You got something going on with Lars Sullivan here? That man has disappeared from the <laughs> earth and then has appeared back again, and somehow globbed on to you. Yeah, exactly. Yes. How and what's happening here? So you know, I guess I look. I'm going to call it like it is, and you know, there's a part of me that feels 
bad for him. If I didn't think he was such a creep from all from all that I know, there's a part of me that feels bad for him. But I don't like the way he played it anyway. So we'll just call it like this is a fact. This is not character. This is not whatever. Like this dude, I don't know what he was trying to accomplish. So I had a clip uh, of me and Latimer in a late stage of our match. Uh, you know, and for those that were watching, I had endured a severe beating at this point. 90% of the matches outside of the ring. I got waterboarded even. Uh, so I don't have a lot of gas left in the tank at this point. And so this clip is getting a lot of play. And in the clip, it's the second super kick that I throw at Latimer. And, you know, there's not a lot behind it. And he writes like, that's a weak kick. Or like, you know, something like this. Like, And so... I responded to him and I said, well, that's uh, quite a critique from somebody who the only thing they're wrestling these days is with their thoughts, you know? And then it got picked up by, by like a news site and it just kind of started going uh, viral. And it was funny because he ended up like shutting his Instagram to private. Cause I guess people were like going in there and like, Oh, you got roasted. You're an idiot. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I just don't understand. You want to give me constructive criticism? First of all, watch the match and know where it's at. Because, like, if you watch the match, there's nobody going to say, like, oh, that was a weak kick. Like, I was lucky I could throw a kick at that point. So, and that was kind of the point if you watch it. So, uh, you know, I just think it was unwarranted. And I think if you're trying to get into the science behind it, yeah, I think he was trying to glom on to some of the uh, buzz I had going. But, like, I don't know you, bro. And that's a cheesy way to go about it. And aren't you supposed to be a big deal anyway? You're Lars Sullivan. You were in NXT beating up, you know, little skinny dudes. So I thought they liked you. I don't know. So what do you need to comment on my stuff? I want to just stick to creeping in girls' inboxes, you know? I Like, what do you want from me, bro? Like, use Instagram. <laughs> use Instagram the way you use it. Don't, don't comment on my stuff. So I don't really like them. There's no games there. I'd rather never talk about him again. And he looked like a goof in that moment, and he's a goof now. So that's that's life. I hope he learned a lesson. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see what happens next for him. But I don't think anything great. But I don't know because I'm not in the business, so I don't. Uh, Lars you know, Sullivan's going to be gonna knocking at my door away. shortly. I'm going to step away from that one before I uh, get in trouble. But uh, again, this weekend, WWC, you defending your championship against Lightning. Bad Bunny is going to turn it off. There's so much happening with you. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to uh, promote? Because I know you're part of NWA as well. But you know, this yes. is really about WWC, and I, right. I want to kind of keep it that way but at the well, same time here's what i would tell you man. going on here's what i would tell you uh big things are happening in the nwa it's slowly growing um i feel very responsible for a lot of the positive changes uh it's no secret and i want it to be known that uh i am now uh the national promoter for the company as well and uh we are making amazing changes in that company and you know, all I could say is wrestling is like, uh, here's where I like fail uh, science class or whatever. What is that word? It's like, you know, how rivers flow into other rivers. What is that? Like a, uh, a, a tributary? What is that? You know what I'm wow. saying? Wrestling all flows into itself. Oh, yeah, I'm smart. Yeah. No, I, I don't even know if I use that right, bro. Wrestling all flows into itself. So that's why it's okay to talk about NWA. That's why it's okay to talk about WWC. That's why it's okay to talk about WWE because we are in a time and age where you never know what's going to happen. Case in point, I'm on TV today with WWE. Tomorrow I'll be on TV with the NWA. This weekend I'll be on TV with WWC. That's the way it works. I'm just one guy. There's many more going to be doing the same thing. And uh, it all flows into itself. And the most important thing that everybody loses track of, the real winners here, the fans, because they get to see all the best wrestling and all the whatever. So if you're on that island, if you're in a, you know, if you're near San Juan and you're and you're on that side of the island and you want to come see it, man, I recommend it. And I know you don't even almost don't even have to tell those people because they know, man. I get in an Uber there, people. I got Uber drivers hitting me up. They're like, I'll be at the show. I'll be at the show. You know, I only get upset. I I, I can't I can't say hi to everybody. You know what I mean? Like I want to hang out with everybody. I want to thank everybody. Because it doesn't matter, dude. Like, you can love me. You can hate me. You know, it's entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't – you think I care if Joe Schmo doesn't like me? Like, I think it's funny. So, like, if somebody <laughs> wants to bark at me like a dog, bark at me like a dog, dude. Like, I, I'm going to Have laugh. you been barked at by I people? I mean, it feels like, you know, when people are like, <laughs> 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 oh, like yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, like, you're barking at me like a dog. I don't know what you're doing. Oh, so, man. 
So you know how it goes, man. But yeah, of course. I mean, now let's talk about NWA then for a second, because sure. since you you know all rivers flow together in wrestling. Right. Uh, go back months ago, it was like the rumor was NWA is going to be on CW, the network. But then that was kind of that didn't. No one really knew 100 percent because that was a rumor. No one had 100 percent clad what's happening. NWA ends up on CWTV.com, also the app. Right. But again, there was never clarification, hey, we're going to be on TV. You know, it, that was a rumor. And then when NWA ended up on the app, people were kind of like, wait, what happened here? The rumor right. said this. And because right. everyone connected that to a segment with James Mitchell and right. a drug incident on a pay-per-view, they connected those dots and tried to say, the reason they're not on TV is because James Mitchell uh, snorted snorted fake cocaine yeah, yeah, on a yeah. pay-per-view. So do you, since you're the national promoter for NWA as well, do you have any clarification on that? Because that was really a confusing time for NWA mm -hmm. fans to try to figure out. Is it this cocaine spawn? Is it something we didn't see before? Like, what is the deal? Uh, yeah, no, the, the reality is this. And, and I think uh, Billy himself has touched on it on Busted Open or whatever. And, you know, sometimes I think he, I think he speaks too clearly and too on the nose and it goes right over people's heads um so basically like let me just separate this into pieces for you yeah so when the cw deal was announced it was never announced that uh we were going on live tv what was announced was that we had a deal in place with cw which was a previous statement billy had said was with a top 20 cable network or something like this i don't remember the exact quote yeah. but all referencing the same kind of thing, okay? Um, and again, if we fast forward, what did WWE just sign for Raw? A huge deal to stream on Netflix, right? Yep. So, I mean, is that a loss? Is that a negative? No, but obviously Netflix is bigger than the CW app, but no one's debating that. But the point is, the future of TV, oh, by the way, this reality show coming out on WWE, again, what's it on? Roku, a streamer. So here we go. So the reality is cable in itself is not what it used to be. If you don't believe me, now look at some of the other wrestling companies and the live crowds and what is being on TV really worth all the time, right? According to the internet people anyway. So uh, there was never really said, so there was no lie there like, oh, he lied, we were going to be on cable, we're not. Now, getting to the James Mitchell thing, I can 110% tell you, no matter what anyone else says, and I'm totally okay saying this, it had nothing to do with anything. So other than saying that someone saying this spot with James Mitchell was in bad taste, right? Okay. Yeah. But if you're like, okay, they did this, and then CW said, no, -uh, we're never doing this because of this. No. CW wasn't even aware of it. You could email it to them a thousand times. They don't care. They got worse stuff going on. You go click the app and go watch some of those shows. There's plenty of drug use and simulated drug use in those shows and whatever. And I mean, all right, I got to back that up, okay? Because I'm going to, I don't want to misquote myself. I don't I really watch saying. all the shows on there, but I'm going to guess. I'm going to take a gamble and guess that of the billion shows that are on that app, there's simulated drug use and whatever else. So they're on the app, and I'm sure on the network channel, they have the same. It's just society, right? There's movies. People do drugs in movies. They show yeah. it. Okay. It didn't. But again, maybe now I'm speaking out of pocket because I'm talking about somebody else's stuff. So whatever. But what I can speak about is our own stuff. It didn't affect anything. So Very this good. is me trying to be a quote machine without now I'm, I went too far. So I'm back it up. I'm going to say it again, clear one more time. The James Mitchell cocaine spot <laughs> did not cost a TV deal for the NWA. It had nothing to do with anything. There was no discipline handed down. No one cared. Thank you. Thank okay. you for clarifying that because <laughs> no, you know, but I'm serious. Cause yeah, you, cause you don't, I, nobody, you just go by the rumor and, and you're not sure what to believe, what not to believe. And so, you know, I'm glad you clarified here Absolutely. what exactly it was because no, again, I, I think that's what the rumors deal come always, out. You don't know. The deal always was what it was. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what the future holds or what other things are on the table. I'm not privy to it. So okay. I can only tell you what's in front of me, but I know that uh, the size of the crowds we've been drawing are record breaking for the NWA. Yeah. And uh, I have a good idea on what needs to happen. And, you know, one thing I always like speaking on is I don't think Billy gets enough credit for 
how he runs the wrestling part of the company. I think he does a really good job. And I understand where people can have opinions and argue it, but I think the overall product is in a very positive direction. And I think if you watch it, it comes off very professionally and very TV friendly. So I don't think any of that's holding us back. You know what I'm saying? I think it speaks to where our growth is coming from. I just think when you get into these things, it's a a lot of technical business stuff. And there's a lot of other, it's very hard, you know, inside a company. There's a lot of things there. So all I could say is the future looks bright and it's being proven because every event we're growing and we're announcing more events and things are happening. And, you know, hopefully people are watching the app and, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's all we can do. And I know there's right. some problem with the international, like we hear, you know, that it's not available in other countries and, yep. you know, uh, some people have worked around it with a VPN. And, uh, I don't know. I, I like I said, I, I'm pretty sure that's a possibility, but some people don't want to get a VPN or for whatever reason, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not in another country, so I don't, I don't know the whole rationale behind it, but I know that it's a, some kind of possibility, but I do feel bad for those that can't watch it. But I also know it's not the NWA's fault. We don't prefer that. So, you know, all we could say, man, is if you could watch it, enjoy it, support it. And if you can't watch it, try to dig for it, try to find it because you're missing out. I mean, I'll tell you this, man, there's been some very good matches that are only have been on the CW app. They haven't been anywhere else. And I'm in one of them. Beavers Latimer is a can't miss. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, there's another one. There's another can't miss coming out in a few weeks with me. And it's a can't miss, I'm telling you. So it's top level. So I'll stand by it. So download the app and watch it. That's all I can say about that. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Because, you know, before we wrap up, what you kind of alluded to a little bit was, unfortunately, not just NWA, really any wrestling company, the CEO, the people who run it are politicized based on whatever their connection is to the outside world. doesn't matter if they're right. a part of wrestling or not. And right. every, as obviously the WWE with Vince McMahon issues, you know, and AEW with Tony Khan, you know, uh, TNA, Scott Demore, him getting laid out. Like every single person, right. every company has something or something. But NWA, obviously on that app, it's awesome because, you know, it's not like anyone just sitting on the CWTV.com app. You know what I mean? Like that's the, I think that's the one thing people are just like, well, what about this? Well, what can't you, why can't you look at the positive part and not the negative part of all this? Like you're, well, you're trying to find the Well, that to the people that just want to say negative stuff. If you truly enjoy NWA, I don't see how seeing it on an app really affects it in the negative, especially when it's actually streamlined the show a little bit and kind of gotten rid of some of the fluff. So, I mean, I think it's been a win all the way around. So, yeah, man. That's awesome. I, mean, I, just, I, don't, I don't get that. Like, enjoy wrestling. That's, a, that's, that's the thing. Here, here's what it really comes down to. I'll tell, I'll tell you and every fan the truth. Like, we're out here injuring ourselves. And it's a job. And we get paid for it. But we do it more because we love being entertainers. And we love being up in front of the people. And we want to make you guys feel stuff. So, like, you know, just give us the the love back just enjoy it don't fight don't bicker about where it's seen or who's is better or whatever who cares you know enjoy what you enjoy watch it love it it's wrestling you know and that's all i dream about man if i can affect you know one one kid growing up they can be like yo this guy's awesome i would be like this guy you know like he's cool man like and i've had seen small glimpses of that i have fans that are kids that hit me up and and you know i've seen through friends and this and that and they're like oh my kid's imitating you again and he's saying this and that and i'm like that's awesome, you know, like, because it's inspiring. So I remember when I was a kid and I imitated Hulk Hogan, you know what I mean? So of course. Like, do I think I'm on that level? No. But the fact that I get any glimpse into that is so, you know, really validating and cool for me. And I think that's what most wrestlers who would speak honestly would tell you matters. So it's like all we could say to the fans is like, yo, just enjoy it, dude. Like, just let go. Stop complaining. Like, it's it's all good. Well, They'll be complaining this weekend when you rip off Bad Bunny's arm and put it in a pot of stew. <laughs> oh, I hope so. I hope so. At the most recent the coming whole up, WWC of... event, defending your television championship, your TV championship. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's and so hopefully, shiny. as the song goes, you know, uh, if one person believes in you deep enough, strong enough, they'll believe in you. That'll make two people who believe in you, and then three people, and then suddenly everyone's posing like you. Is that a Bad Bunny song? 
No, it's not a bad oh. bunny song. You get out of here. Oh. This, this, is, this interview's over. Uh, right. Brian Idol, thank you so much for being here on Tank Out. I'm C Fall. He's the famous championship this weekend. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. That's so funny.